Welcome to this session on Docker. I am Rakhav and today we are going to see how Docker works. So let's get started. Before we understand the working of Docker, let's look at a general workflow of Docker. So in a Docker workflow, a developer will define all the application and its dependencies and requirements in a file which is called as Docker file. Now this Docker file can be used to create Docker images. So in a Docker image, you will have all the application, its requirements and dependencies. And when you run a Docker image, you get Docker containers. So Docker containers are the runtime instances of a Docker image. And these images can also be stored in an online cloud repository, which is called as Docker Hub. So if you go to Docker Hub, you will find a lot of publicly available images and you can store your own Docker image as well. You can also store your Docker image in your own repository or version control system. Now these images can be pulled to create containers in any environment. So you can create a Docker container in a test environment or on any other environment. And we can be sure that our application will run in the same way using Docker containers. Now Docker is a container platform. It will be very useful if we understand what is the difference between containerization versus virtualization and what is the benefit of using container platforms like Docker. Now in the concept of virtualization, we have a software which is called as hypervisor, which is used to create and run virtual machines. And using hypervisor, we can create multiple virtual machines on a host operating system. Now these virtual machines have their own operating system and it does not use the host operating system. So there can be an overhead on the host platform. Also in case of virtual machines, we have to allocate a fixed memory and space to every machine. So there is a lot of wastage of memory and space. Let us come to containerization. Here we have a container engine and we do not have a separate operating system, but we have containers where we have the application and all its dependencies and it will use the host operating system. Now here the space, the memory and other resources are not fixed. It will be taken as per the needs of the application. So there is no overhead. It is very lightweight and very fast. Now there can be scenarios where we need a virtual machine over a host operating system and then have containers. For example, if you want to run a Windows application on a Linux operating system, we need to have a virtual machine first, which will have a Windows operating system and then we can have containers over it. So now in case of Docker, the container engine is a Docker engine. Docker has a client server architecture. Let us understand this in a very easy way. In Docker, command line interface is the client and we have the Docker server or the Docker daemon, which will have all the containers and the Docker server receives commands from the Docker client in the form of commands or a REST API request. And all the components of Docker client and server together forms the Docker engine. So the Docker daemon or server receives the commands from the Docker client through REST APIs or command line interface. And the Docker client or Docker daemon can be present on the same platform or can be on different machines. We will look into it into more details in our coming sessions. I hope now you understand all these terminologies related to Docker and now we are equipped to move forward in our sessions with Docker.